Hello crafty friends! My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. In today's video, I'm going to be using products from Taylor Expressions' new From the Heart release to create a quick and easy foiled sympathy card. I hope you'll stick around and see how I'm going to create it. The new release from Tailored Expressions is going to help you create and send cards for the occasions that might be a little more difficult. They have three new packages of insiders to help you create sympathy cards, encouragement cards, and remembrance cards. Some of them are a little bit funny, like if cauliflower can become pizza, you my friend can do anything, but most of them are on the more serious side, and if you're like me and have a hard time writing inside cards for hard occasions, they're going to help you share your feelings with the recipient, but already have the words for you. Also included in this release is the Thing with Feather stamp set. I thought these would pair beautifully with the Insider Sympathy card that reads, Feathers appear when angels are near. If you want to check out these products and others from the new release, I will have links in the description box below. The Insider's cards are kind of meant for the inside of your card, but you can always use these for your focal point on the front, and that's what I'll be doing today. To make this shine a little bit, I will be using Silver Deco Foil, and I got out my Foil Magic Shims to help me get a nice crisp foil on this. You do get two in the package, but you only need to use one each time. The colors today are inspired by my mom's favorite color, purple, so I got out sugar cube cardstock, jelly donut cardstock, and I'll be doing some stamping with jelly donut and lavender glaze. There is some die cutting on today's card, so I got out arch stacklets, petite scallop rectangle stacklets, and additional A2 layer stacklets. As I start to share the process, I'll tell you about other tools or products, but as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! Speaking of die cutting, that's the first thing I'm going to be doing today. From a scrap of sugar cube, I'm using the third from largest rectangle die. And from a scrap of jelly donut, I'm using the largest scallop rectangle. For my sentiment, I want it to have a different shape to go on the front. So I'm using the third from largest in the arch stacklets die set. The next step is going to be to foil that insider card. So I got out one of the sheets of deco foil and cut a piece that would cover the front of my card. After the piece was cut, I placed it shiny side up onto the insider card and then got my sandwich ready for the mink. And that is going to be my piece of cardstock on top of the foil magic shim and then inserted into the carrier folder that came with my mink. I then took that off camera to run it through, and here's a look at that shine. Before I move on to the next step, I would like to invite you to go check out my latest video for Tailored Expressions on their channel. I use new release products to create the card showing on screen now. I will have this video linked in the description box below and as an end card at the end of this video. I'd love for you to stop by, see how it was created, and leave some love. Now it's time to do some stamping, and because these are red rubber stamps, I can take the foam pad out of my Misty, and I'm going to be stamping onto that piece of sugar cube cardstock that I cut with the dies. Now because my feathers are going to hang off the edge, I did add a little adhesive to the back of that piece, removed some of the tack with my fingers, and then I placed it so it was aligned in one of the pre-printed corners. Then I played around a little bit with the placement of the feathers, 
and I decided before I stamped onto my piece of sugar cube, even though I could have used the other side if I didn't like it, that I would do a test on that misty grid paper mat. And good thing I did because I ended up adjusting it a little bit, just because of what areas would be covered up later by the sediment. Before adjusting the stamps, I did clean them off, and then I moved the feathers around trying to cover areas that would be open behind that sentiment piece. Once I had those in place, I inked them up again with the lavender glazed ink and stamped it onto the piece of sugar cube. I just love how delicate and airy those feathers look. Before I put the Misty away, I do have a little more stamping. Using the Jelly Donut ink, I'm going to stamp that smallest feather onto a scrap of sugar cube. Now originally I inked it up and then I stamped it once full strength and turned the piece of cardstock around and did a stamp off. I wasn't sure which I wanted to use so I tried them both. I did decide to go with the darker version. Using my fine tip scissors, I fussy cut this off camera. Before I start putting the card together, I wanted to add some texture to the stamped piece with this TE brick embossing folder. I thought the bricks with those delicate feathers made a nice juxtaposition. Now all of the pieces are ready so we can start assembling the card. Before I put the brick piece onto its purple mat, I want to get the sentiment added to it. And because I know I'm going to cut off some of the bottom, I played around with the placement of the sentiment piece and that extra feather I was going to add. And once I had a good placement of what I wanted cut off, I just made a little mark with my fingernail, then brought in my photo trimmer and sliced that off. To keep the card pretty flat for easy mailing, I adhered the sentiment to the stamped piece, to its scallop mat, to the card front with just tape runner. But I did want something a little dimensional to add some more interest, so for the little purple feather, I added some foam tape to the back and placed that onto the card front. The front of the card does have a little sparkle with that foiled sentiment, but I wanted there to be even a little more. So I brought in Tailored Expressions Drip Drops, and these are kind of silver and clear and iridescent, so I thought they would bring in some of the purple from the rest of the card. I took a little time to place down where I wanted each piece to go, and then once those were all arranged, I brought in my Barely Art glue, lifted each of the drip drops up with my Embelly Jelly Stick, placed a dot of adhesive, and then put it back down on top of it. Now while that's drying, I have just a little more stamping to do. To add some decoration to the inside of the card, I cut a piece of sugar cube to three and a quarter by five inches. And I'm gonna be using the lighter purple, the lavender glaze ink, to stamp one of the feathers on the inside. Now because I do want the feather to hang off a couple edges, once again I adhered it up in the center of that grid paper. Then when it was in place, I inked it up and stamped it. I like how this is going to add some color to the inside and interest by having that feather bleed off the edges. I place this on the inside of my card and here are some close-up looks at the finished piece. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. And until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.